like a drum that cannot extend. You are not like a building, physical building where living stones. So your capacity can extend. So God can give you one talent. And when you are faithful with one talent, your capacity will extend to how many? To two. When you are faithful, your capacity will extend to five. All right? And your capacity will extend to ten. And so our heart, our soul, our mind is capable of enlargement. But we don't just make the effort. We feel that we have come to an end in ourselves and nothing can be done for us. And nothing we can do ourselves to improve ourselves so that we can go further in the things of God. So this morning I want to show you seven points about Africa. Uh, that's, that's just the beginning. I'll finish within my time, but that's just the beginning. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Number one, I want you to remember that it was Africa that Abraham came and he was blessed. I want you to write that down because I'm going to emphasize that later, maybe some other time. But understand that it was Africa that Abraham visited and he was blessed. In Genesis chapter 14, verse 14 to 16. Number two, Jacob, his son or, or, or grandson, came to Africa and he was blessed. In, 40, in Genesis 47, verse 11. Remember, this bless that I'm talking about was financial. This bless that I'm talking about was monetary. It was money. And so this evil came to Africa. Abraham was in Africa. And it was Pharaoh, uh, sorry, the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that blessed him. And what happened? You remember the story where he said his sister was his, uh, his, his wife was his sister. And then eventually they found out that it was his wife. And then they eventually released his wife to him. But before they released his wife, they gave him gold. They gave him silver. They gave him horses. They gave him cattle. They gave him a lot of things for his wife's sake. It's there in Genesis, 12, uh, Genesis 14. They gave him because of the wife of Abraham that they took and put in Pharaoh's harem. And he said, now I will have gone to bed with your wife. But now you, you are made us sinners. But now God delivered us by making us know that this is your wife. So whatever we gave you on behalf of for the sake of your wife, that we are going to marry her, take all those things and go away with it. So Abraham left e Egypt blessed. Can you give a clap of praise to the Lord? Now, his riches did not reduce from that time. Jacob, the same thing. When there was a famine all over the world, Jacob came to Africa with his children. And it was Africa that sustained the Jews and the children of God for the time and the period of the famine. And so you understand that God has blessed Africa. Number three, Joseph nourished Israel out of Africa. Can you say Jacob nourished Israel out of Africa? Can you say that together with me? Can you say that together with me? Joseph did what? Nourished Israel from Africa. That's Genesis 47 verse 12. And became the father of Pharaoh. And you can become the father of the land by wisdom. We are coming to that very soon. Now number four. It, it was in the land of Africa that the 12 sons of Jacob were was, was spared. They found refuge in the land of Africa. And so Africa is a place where you can refer to in the Bible. Now, number five, it was in Africa that Moses was born and became a great leader to liberate a whole nation. Exodus chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. So understand Moses was born in Africa. Now, so you are born here too. So what's our limit? What's our problem? What's our limit? What's our problem? I'll soon tell you what our problem is. Number six, it was from Africa that Israel amassed so much gold and silver and precious stones and building materials 
to build the tabernacle, the house of God, in those days. It was from Africa. Whereas we Africans are running helter-skelter, not knowing what to do with our lives. Yet, it is from Africa that Decibu came and got money and got gold and got silver and got precious stones and get building materials and got wool and got clothes and many of the things that they need to build the tabernacle of God. Can you say amen with me? Number seven, it was in Africa that our Savior and our Lord was taken to, to escape death, to flee Herod who wanted to kill him. Amen? I said amen. You are right, eh? good. But please, I want you to listen because I don't have time. Number eight, when Jesus had taken the way of the crucifixion and the cross, it was an African brother, Simeon of Cyrene, that is today's Libya, which helped him to transport the cross to Golgotha. What's the meaning of that? It means that every African should touch the cross to be profited by the achievement of the cross. Now when you touch the cross and the cross comes to you, you should be profited by the cross. That's a very, very important thing. I cannot go into the details of that. But I just want to give you these eight points for you to learn from that Africa is not as useless as we think. Though we have experienced bitterness, we have experienced rejection, we have experienced ignorance, but that's not the end of the road. We will not get bitter, but we will get better. Oh, I can't hear your amen about that. I said we will not get bitter. We will get better. So God can walk through us for, from our humbleness of mind. So we must wake up. We must do what? Wake up. And I believe God is going to wake us up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want us to pray right now. I want you to stand on your feet and I want us to pray. I've told you some things already. There are four more points I want to make and I'll make them quickly. But right now, put your Bible, put your paper aside and let's pray this prayer. Can you pray after me and say, Father? Please stand up on your feet and say, Father, resources. Say, resources are at my disposal. And I will be able to access it. Can you say it very, very lively? Now open your eyes. Do you see that door there? Sorry, do you see that door there? Do you see this door here? That's what is called an access. In other words, if there, are, if there is wealth in this room, you need to come through the door to access the wealth. So can you say after me again, Father? In the name of Jesus, resources that are at my disposal, I will access them in the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? Hallelujah. Reto sonda kabzavata lidi mene hallelujah. And boza shanta kamda babudi hallelujah. In Jesus name we pray. Can you say with me father. In the name of Jesus. There are resources available. In God almighty. Wisdom. Power. Understanding. Career direction. Children. The future. They are available in God Almighty. I receive in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that prayer for yourself. Let these things be activated in my life. I have access to them. Nothing is stopping me in Christ Jesus from accessing the wisdom of God, the power of God, the understanding of God, the things of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you say, Father, all our young people need not to be confused. They don't need to be confused about marriage. About marriage. No more confusion. Because there is access to wisdom to make a choice in the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? 
Wisdom to make a choice. Wisdom to make a choice. Oh, pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your children. Pray for the youth of the local churches all around us. I want you to pray that prayer. Pray, pray. I want you to pray right now. Yes, I shut a candle of Babude. In Jesus' name, I pray. Can you say, Father, I unlock right now with my mouth as the key. I unlock resources that are hidden in the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, can you pray that prayer? Be honest, be honest, be honest, be honest, be honest, be honest. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You may be seated for some minutes. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Why is it that we are not accessing these resources? Why is it that they are not, they are not unlocked? Praise the Lord. Why is it that they are not unlocked? Hmm. Praise God. Lord, deliver me from temptation. <laughs> Praise God. Now, hear me very well. When you are born again, a lot of us up till now have not understood that God Almighty has changed your nature into his own nature. If any man is born again, it's what? Say it now. It's a new world. It's a new creation. All things are what? Passed away. All things are become new. But then it takes a lot of re renewal of our minds to actually transform us to that person. Even though we are born again. And so there is a problem of God consciousness that is absent from many Christians. What did I call it? I said, oh, my, it has jumped over your head. You are not listening. I, are you with me? What did I say we don't have? What did I say is missing? God consciousness. Can you say that together with me? I don't understand you. I don't hear you. Eh? Eh? My sister. My sister. Uh, no, no, no. It's not that I want to embarrass you. I'm sorry. Are you conscious of your husband sitting here? You are conscious. That's how you should be conscious of. Amen? Therefore, the boldness that is in God is inside of you. So you are not afraid of anything. It is that that we are united and joined to God, inducted into God, that we lack. Even the unbeliever in Europe believe what I'm saying now. Why? Because their fathers had revival. And the teaching that passed down to their little children and they grew up made them bold. Not to be looking down and looking down. They're reading the Bible, looking down, look, reading Bible, looking down, reading Bible, looking down. As if somebody is going to steal the Bible from your hand. There is a weakness in our spirit. There is a weakness in our soul. We can't even lift up our face and talk to somebody eye to eyeball. Yoruba, we can't even talk to people with our face eye to eye. We are ashamed. We are afraid. Because we don't have God consciousness. You know what I mean by God consciousness? Jesus became God man. And the goal of God from eternity is to translate every man to become like himself. Did you hear what I said? I said, did you hear what I said? The consciousness that you're a child of God. The boldness that you're a child of God. 
Do you know what I told you about the Hebrews? That's the last point I'm going to make on this matter. Do you remember what I told you about the Hebrews? I told you that a man that is a Hebrew is a man that will always cross over. Did you remember I taught you? Oh. Ah, you will not forget this one. I will repeat it. What did I say I taught you? That the Hebrew is a person that will always cross over. In other words, you over, Goliath may be there, he will cross over. The wall of Jericho may be there, he will cross over. You may bring the Red Sea, he will cross over. You may bring another Jordan that is overflowing. The Hebrew will do what? We cross over. That's the meaning of their name. The one that crosses over. And we have a better covenant than the Jews. Oh, I can't hear a clap offering. No, you are not getting it. That days of your life. That's why I'm so sad these days. They are afraid of money. They are afraid of husband. They are afraid of wife. They are afraid of their children. They are afraid of your capacity. In the name of Jesus, you will be united to God. You will have unity with God. Can I hear a big amen? Remember, when Jesus was praying for the disciples that they may be one, it's true to preach that we ought to be one and united in the church. That's what not Jesus was talking about. What Jesus was talking about is that us, that everyone will be what? One. So that even though God is in heaven and you are here on earth, you will act as if God were here. Oh, you are not here and you are not listening. Do you think you understand what I'm talking about? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Because we do not have this God consciousness. When we see somebody is sick, we're afraid he's going to die. When we see somebody has fever, we're afraid he's going to die. He's going to die. He's going to die. And if he can convince you that your neighbor is going to die, you have lost that neighbor. Because as you are going around the person, you are carrying the spirit of death with you. Because Satan has been able to persuade you. And so don't let Satan persuade you that you cannot do what he said you can do. Can you hear? Can you say amen with me? I didn't hear your amen properly. So finally, because my time is over, let me close with this. Can, can you give us uh, Genesis 47? Um, but um, please just write it down. Genesis 40, 47. Just write it down. In verse 13 to 24. Hmm. Just two statements. And then I'll jump to the next one. Are you with me? Sorry, are you with me? These are practical examples of people who were indwelt or at least they knew God so much. That story is about Joseph. Can everybody say Joseph? The Bible said that money failed in Egypt. What did I say? I didn't hear you. Money did what? Failed. But wisdom did not fail. Money may fail, but wisdom will know what? Will never fail. Because Joseph had wisdom. The, the, the Egyptians had money, but they could not buy food. Because there was no food. The Egyptians had land, but they could not do anything with their land because there was no food. So money did what? Failed. Every food available was with Joseph because he had had a dream and a vision which gave him wisdom to have reservation for seven years. Hey, are you with me? So wisdom did not fail, but money failed. And so what did they do? They sold their land to Joseph. They sold their farms to Joseph. They sold everything they had to Joseph to get food in order to remain alive. So money failed, but wisdom did not fail fail. You people, please listen to me very, very, very well. Oh. Because many of you don't listen and go home and say is the, what this man said. Is it true? 
and search the Bible yourself and pray hard that this little business you have, if you have wisdom, the business will increase, even in the time of famine. Think about that. That's unlocking capacity. And so the wisdom that Joseph had unlocked the capacity to feed nations of the earth. Can you say amen with me? A lot of us, we have one, uh, uh, 100,000 naira uh, profit over the year in our business. And then, then we go and buy Babanriga. You know what is Babanriga? Oh, you don't know Babanriga? Agbada, you go and buy Agbada and do like this. 100,000. There's 100,000 Agbada. That is how small our understanding of issues are. But when you understand that there is wisdom to feed the whole nation, hey, you begin to pant. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. Quickly. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 29. Can you all look up here and let's read it together. If you find it in your Bible, fine. But I wanted us to read this one. 1 Kings 4, 29. Can you read it with me? And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding. How much? How much? How much? How much have you asked for? How much exactly have you asked for? God gave him what? Wisdom and understanding. Exceeding much. And largeness of heart. Even as the sand upon the seashore. Verse 30. Verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country. And all the wisdom of Egypt. Amen. Amen. I said amen. Because of wisdom, eh, I'm going back to Joseph. Joseph became the father of Pharaoh. He became a counselor to Pharaoh. If you don't have supernatural wisdom, you can't be that. Because when the leader listens to you, he's going to succeed in his government. Am I correct? Am I correct? Now, here is Solomon. He himself now, the leader. And the Bible said God gave him wisdom so much, more than the sand of the seashore. And then the Bible says, for he was wiser than all men. And then he mentioned them. We can't go into the detail. Another day we'll do. Are you following me? Are you following me? My challenge is, how much wisdom, this Old Testament man know, how much wisdom have he asked for? How much wisdom have we what asked for to turn things around in our lives? Are you with me? To turn things around where? In our lives. One of the Americans that I knew said he prayed for two years to have wisdom to start the first Christian television station in the world. He prayed for wisdom for two, two, two years. I want a lucky job. I don't know what to think about him. Maybe negative or positive. But the lady said she's a Christian. The woman said she prayed for almost two years to have wisdom to become the richest woman in Africa. Wisdom. Wisdom. Do you know that wisdom is a person? Do you know that wisdom is an angel? How do you keep that angel in your house? How do you keep that angel going about with you? In decision making, in career choice, in husband choice, wife choice, business choice. How do you keep him with you? Amen? Are we ready to pay the price that it really takes? Or we are just willing to be ordinary people? I'm sorry, like most Ibadan people are. In Ibadan, you can't do something extraordinary. Everybody will be looking at you that you have done so too much. Because everybody must be the same level. Are you 
So if you do something extraordinary, people will be saying, ah, what's this one doing? He has done too much. But the wisdom I'm talking about is not like that. This wisdom I'm talking about is what will take you above normal. That's why in the, in the publicity, I said, elevated than the case. The meaning of that in English is when you are glorified. When people see you more than you are. It is the grace of God that can set to that. And I'm praying that today, as this man of God prays for us, you will have a benefit. You will go home with a benefit in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will have access to wisdom. You will have access to understanding. You will have access to correct choices. You will have access to power. You will have access to everything you need in the name of Jesus. If you are hearing my voice, I'm saying to you that the Nigerian church that I know, thank God for the Nigerian church. But brothers and sisters, we can do better. Amen? We can do what? We can do better. Let me just leave it at that. We can do better. I don't want to go into politics, but I'm concerned about the African. The African has a reserve he has not tapped into. That's why I show you those eight revelations in the book of Genesis. And I want you to pay attention from today that God will make you to seek his wisdom and his power. You will be conscious of God. Not your weakness, not your complaints, not your bias, not your prejudice, not your stinking thinking. That's the way I see it. A lot of people have stinking. If you hear, if you smell what they are thinking, it's so absurd. And they are Christians. Some of them are even leaders. So what I'm saying today is simple. We would pray that God will open this access in our heart. Why? Because the Lord is already living in those of us who are born again. True or false? I said true or false. So the more you make yourself available, the more you discipline yourself spiritually, the more you take those steps day after day, day after day, wisdom will multiply. Wisdom will increase. And those things you are thinking are too big today will become small. Will become nothing to you in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying that that is the way it shall be. Even if I'm no longer alive, there are people who will arise among you. You will be great. You will be mighty. Nobody will be able to limit your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can you stand up and let's pray one minute prayer. I want you to stand up and pray one minute prayer. And that's, that will be all for me this, this day. We will continue on Wednesday by the grace of God. I invite you especially to come back. We will not waste your time on Wednesday. We will make it as short as this. And the Lord is going to bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus. Can we say with me, Father? Can you say with me, Father? In the name of Jesus, I open up my for prayers right now, for blessing right now, for addition right now, for multiplication in my life, for the wisdom of God, for the understanding of God in the name of Jesus. Can you raise your voice and pray in the spirit? I want to pray in the spirit. Pray aloud in the spirit. Open your mouth and pray aloud in the spirit. I don't want you to pray, see me, see me, all those small, small prayers. I want you to pray aloud. Let your stomach enlarge. Let your power enlarge from your stomach. That's where it is. That's where it is. Growth in your spirit. Understanding in your spirit. Wisdom from your spirit. Through praying in tongues, you can bring out the wisdom of God.
Let your voice be louder. Let your voice be louder than before. Let your voice be louder. Pray like somebody who knows that God is a personal father to you. In Jesus' mysterious name, we have prayed and celebrated. Now, sir, it seems your microphone is better than this one. Apostle, it seems like that. And your voice is louder than mine. I have a, a feminine voice. It's, it appears to be like that. Thank you, sir. Now, um, I'm going to pray. But uh, I'd like to say something. You see, Apostle Lawan is a friend of mine. He told you one or two things. And uh, I wish I had all the luxury to be here and just say one or two things. But uh, I used to be a troublemaker, and I'm still a troublemaker. Hello? I, I, I like trouble. I, I like trouble. Because when you don't have trouble, you don't grow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I like trouble. I remember in those days when I'm preaching, I laugh on the pulpit. They say, why are you laughing? I preach and laugh. I preach and sing. I, you know, so that is my life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So one, I want to say that uh, some of you should have told you, I'm not going to say anything new. I, there are some songs I ban anywhere I go. I ban them. I ban those songs because they are part of the songs that reduce us. We are talking about capacity. You know, the choir will come and they will say, Fill my cup, Lord. I live tip, Lord. I say, Don't sing that song here. In the whole of your house, it's the only cup you have. How can you carry a cup from house to church? Am I still talking to somebody? So the trouble has started now. I think you, are, <laughs> you begin to know. Are you still with me? Tell somebody I'm with you. <laughs> Don't tell the person that you are with him, not me. <laughs> You know, have you heard that song before? Is there anybody here who heard that song before? And they'll be so passionate, feel my cup, Lord. So I said, you, how can you come from house? You have basin. You didn't come with the basin. It's cup you brought to church. And that God should fill your cup. No wonder you don't have any growth, no capacity. So, can I hear you say, I reject cup? So, feel what now? Okay, can I, what do you, let us, we are starting, don't forget, the Lord has just, the Lord just talked to us. Feel what? All right, all right. So, anywhere you go, they, you, you hear someone say, feel my cup, Lord, don't sing with them. I don't sing those songs. When they say, feel my cup, Lord, and they are sentimentals and they are looking happy, I am very sad. I said, look at these people. Church changing themselves. Don't forget, the apostle told us, you see, the God man that we are, I don't, I'm going to say one or two things before we begin to pray. So, can you please tell someone, I, I don't have cup to fill? Am I, am I talking to somebody? So, from today, when you are going, you say, fill my tank. Or, fill what? My tank. Uh -huh. At least tank. The tank is bigger than you. Do you. Let me tell you something. Listen, listen, listen. Do you know that the ants, you know ants? The ants. If I tell you what, you see, how many of us have seen ants before? Anybody here who have seen ants? All right, some of us have not seen ants. I so thank God for your life. You didn't have bread in your house, no sugar in your house. Because when you have sugar in your house, there will be ants. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you know, ant is given the capacity to carry something 50 times more than its weight. Ant has the capacity to carry something 50 times more than its own weight. So when I read that thing, I started understanding the supernatural in capacity. Are you following what I'm saying? And that's what Apostle said now. So, don't come to church with what? Cup, number one. Number two, another song that I don't like people singing. It, it's very painful, but it's real. And uh, sometimes they sing it with passion. The way you're looking at me now, you don't want me to talk. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you may be seated if you don't mind. Please sit down. Bigo Luaga Odara Alleluia Odara 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 B
Igbo Luaga Odara Alleluia Eh Odara Eba mi bega 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 Eba mi bega 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 Odara O Igbo Luaga Odara Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated on the anointed seats. Now, listen. Some of you are not used to dancing. Thank God. Those of you who, who are dancing, may God make you to dance more. Amen. Your amen shows that you don't want to dance more. You know, you dance because God has done something. Your capacity has increased. You know, you don't dance because you see the capacity. You dance before you see the capacity. But already the capacity is already in you. Am I, am I talking to somebody? All right, so I'm used to people talking back to me. Okay, there's interpretation in the class, in the church here. Am I correct? All right, please, I'll be slower. Now, I want to say something before I go further. Capacity we are talking about. The apostle said something. You see, I want to, do some, I want to say something and that is strange. Is there anybody with a child, a baby girl? Any child here? Come with your child. She's a blessed child child. Any child, any girl, small girl. All right, bring that girl. He used computer. I want to use the one that you know better because we all have children around us. You too, you are a child sometimes. Am I correct? So let me use a child. All right, thank you, ma. This child, she is going to be one of our senators. I, I thank God for you, my darling. All right, nothing will touch you. You are unreachable and untouchable. And you'll be greater than your mother by far. Yeah. All right, now listen. This girl, this girl has all that the mother has. True? Talk, talk to me, talk back to me. I want to use this illustration you understand. So when I'm praying, you understand why I'm going to pray the way I'm going. This girl has exactly what the mother, you are the mom, Oh, God bless you. They, uh, exactly what the mother has. But she does not have the capacity to deliver a child yet. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that means that you must understand that as beautiful as this girl is, that is why there are people who don't have the capacity to receive what they're asking for. Am I talking to somebody now? That's another dimension that I know Apostle will be talking about that. You are asking for something. If this girl fasts till thy kingdom comes, she will never have a child. He said, oh God, give me child. Oh God, give me child. And you ask her, what are you doing? He said, I'm fasting for a child. And God looks at you, you don't have the capacity yet. Am I talking to somebody? There are things that somebody must have, the capacity to receive some particular things. Am I still talking to somebody? If you are with me, can I hear you say, I, I hear you. All right. So this girl, as beautiful as she is, as complete as she is, she doesn't have the capacity to carry a child. True or false? Am I still talking to somebody? She does not have the capacity to be the mother to an, an, a child or to be wife to somebody. Is that true? Church, you're not talking to me. I want, to, I want you to change because, you see, you must change your mentality because you must understand so that you understand. At the time I'm going to be praying, we're going to be praying together. So this girl, as beautiful as she is, she cannot marry now. True or false? She, can, she can't go to school right now. True or false? Why? But she's a girl. She has all that the mother has. She can't marry now. So there's a capacity for things in your life. So you have capacity that must be developed in you to receive what you are praying for. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? You see, that is why there are people today who pray for some things and God never gave them because they don't have the capacity to receive them. 
Am I still talking to somebody? So you want husband, I want husband. God looks at you. You don't have the capacity to be a wife yet. Hello? I think some people are getting offended. Apostle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want God. God give me money. God so that you don't have the capacity to be rich. If you are rich, you go to hell. Oh yes, you will backslide. You will backslide. You won't come to church again. In fact, when they are calling you, they say, the, the business in my degree, I my, can go Tangora is disturbed. A brother, come to church. I say, no, no. My cap- now I have money. You don't have the capacity to serve God with money. Am I talking to somebody? Man, go, you can go with this a wonderful child. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I hear God? Can I hear someone say, my capacity? Say it, say, my capacity must change to what I desire. I'm, are you following what I'm saying? You see, it's a very important thing. Now, I'm going to come to something now. And as I, I, I'm going to say the next thing. I, I have told people who listen to me, I don't pray for addition. Anywhere I go, they say, Father, add to my life. I say, Passover. What did I say? I, I, I no addition. Because, and that's what they're going to talk about now. Apostle said that thing. He went to where I wanted to read, but I'm not going to, I may read it. Do you know that from the day you came into the world, from Adam's time, we are to multiply. So from today, I want to know that, don't talk about addition in your life again. Ban the word addition. What did I say? Ban it. Don't say God will add to my life. God will not add. God will multiply. You see, you see and your language must re- remain consistent. I would have shown you some scriptures. You see, God is so concerned about multiplication that God made the animals to multiply, fowl to multiply, ants to multiply. Is it you that will not multiply, that is created in the very image of God? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that means that our multiplication is unquestionable. Nobody can fight against it. Even witches cannot fight against your multiplication. Now, let me show you something because it's important. Go to Genesis with me. I'm going to pray for you now. Sorry, in a, in a few minutes, Genesis chapter 1. And let me show you what God did. You see, God is concerned about multiplication, and that is capacity as well. So, look at it, Genesis chapter 1. If you are there, please go to verse 22. Now, go to verse 21. If you are there, please read with me verse 21. And God created great whales. Am I correct? And every what creature that moveth which the waters brought forth, abundantly after the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged what fowl after its kind are you with me and what happened and God said and God sorry and God saw that it was good sorry verse 22 and God did what now I'm not going to talk about that now what did God bless what did God bless what did he bless? No, give me the specifics. It's there. He blessed what? Fish, birds. Am I clear? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, okay, let us, I want you to go back and look at it again. God blessed even fowl. You mean you're not blessed? Do you, do, do, you know, I want to make you sad. I like, me, I, make, I like to make people sad. The reason is that if you are sad, you begin to look for God. Because, you see, when you are, when you are not sad, you, you, when you are comfortable, you don't pray. Look, do you know that I have never seen any time that cockroaches had meeting eh, to multiply? Or rats. Rat had prayer meeting. You know, you know rats? I'm not first no rat. Eh, cool. That they had prayer meeting that we want, we want, to, we want to give birth. Because they are blessed. My father blessed them. And my father said something. And my father said, go and multiply. And those words cannot be revoked by Satan. Not by witches. That is why a rat, if rat comes to your house, leave the rat before you know it multiplies. Let cockroach come to your house. Before you say Jack Robinson, cockroach multiplies. Because God said, my father said, everybody say, my father said. <laughs> say it again, my father said. No, we are talking about capacity. Now, look, I want to read it again. And God blessed them, saying, what's the first thing? Be fruitful. Everybody say fruitful. Then what's the next thing? Multiply. And what? 
fill the waters in the seas and let fowl what multiply in the earth please can i ask you a very sincere question are they multiplying please talk to me are they multiplying <laughs> if there was any creature that will not have multiplication or fruitfulness is the birds of the air because they are close to principalities <laughs> you know they fly in the air <laughs> which is flying the air am i talking to somebody but those witches cannot stop the they can't stop the they can't stop the birds that are flying because God said, "Birds, you must be fruitful. You must multiply." Someone is getting multiplication right now. Someone is being fruitful right now as I'm talking to you, and so that is what is going to happen. Multiplication, the fruitfulness that comes into your life is not because of what you do alone. It's because because of what was spoken into your life. Are you following what I'm saying? There are things we say into your life that must stick. By reason of the anointing that God gives. Now, I'm not going to say much about that. So, you can see multiplication. Let me show you that. When God created man, look at verse 28. And God blessed them. Abi, are you with me? Verse, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, the same thing he told the lesser animals, the creatures, is the same thing he told man. Am I see? Are you with me? The same thing he told the birds told the fish, told the other thing that he created. It's the same thing he told man and he went a little bit further because man is created in his own image. And he now said and God blessed them and God said unto them, be what? Be what? Fruitful. What next? Everybody say multiply. So from today you are talking about multiplication in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? From today you are talking about what? Multiplication. Every time... You are thinking multiplication. You are talking multiplication. You are singing multiplication. You are not, no other thing. Because even before you came into the world, God has told us we must multiply. So I'm going to pray for you now. You will multiply. Yeah. Now, do you know that after the, after the flood, as Noah came out, God did the same thing again. He went to the animals again and said, multiply. And that you see in Genesis chapter 8. He came to man in Genesis chapter 9. He told him again, he blessed them, be fruitful, multiply. So the point I'm making is this. We are to multiply. The capacity to multiply is in your hand. Can I tell somebody, let us do something. I told my beloved friend, apostle, I was talking to a congregation that the Lord gave me opportunity to, to pastor. I said, please, I want all of us to do it. Uh, 30 plus 30. 30 times 30, what do you have? What is that? No, talk to me. What is that? That is why if someone says, I had to you, don't take addition. Even 30 plus 30 is what? 60. 30 times 30 is what? What is the difference? 800 and what? 840. Okay, let's just make it 40 times 40 plus 40. What is that? 80. 40 times 40, what is that? What is the marginal difference? Talk to me now because you know you need this thing so that you will change by force. Today you must change. And I by force, so you can't come back tomorrow or come back on Wednesday here without a testimony. You must be coming back with testimony. Because what the apostle was teaching, some of you, the way you are looking at it, look, I'm trying to see how I can make you to understand it more. And 40 plus 40, how much? Or, or how many? <laughs> For, okay, 40 times 40, what is it? What is the marginal difference? No, talk to me. What's the marginal difference? 1,000? All right. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay, 1,000 plus 1,000. How much? What is that? 2,000. 1,000 times 1,000. What do you have? How much? Are you seeing? Do you see the effect of multiplication? And when God said multiplication here, don't allow any devil to come and make you think that it must be addition. Or one good pastor, in the name of Jesus, you will I, I add your life. Mo ye. Ah, no, that's what I do. But my mama, mama ye ni mo ye. My wife is from Bere. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> so that is why I'm speaking Yoruba and I did Yoruba in school. So, here we are. That I, God will hurt your life. I say, Mo ye. And some people will shout to the men. If they don't pray for you, they say, God, you know, I am multiplication. I did here. I'm in your house. 
And you say that, I am glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. I'm in your house now. By the time I'm coming out, I have been multiplied. Are you following what I'm saying? So there are people that won't pray for you. And truly some prayers, I don't answer amen. It's not pride. It, are you following what I'm saying? They reduce you. They reduce you. The prayer reduces who you are. Am I clear? You do not understand me. We are talking about capacity. The prayer reduces you. Now, I'm supposed to pray. So I even spoke more than four apostles now. <laughs> and apostle gave me only to just to pray. But before I pray, God will fill your cup. That is, that is how I preach. I don't like preaching and then leaving my people. No. So someone said amen. So God, I said, God will fill your cup. What will God feel? Are you ready for that? Number one. Now, now, in your family, what will God do? God will multiply you. Am I clear? Now, I, I gave that analogy of multiplication and addition so that when you are thinking, you begin to think like your father. Your father is not thinking of addition. He is thinking of multiplication. And if you go through the scriptures, you find that God kept on saying the same thing, multiplication. Multiplication. When Adam, no, when, when uh, let me just cut it short, Isaac was sacrificed. You remember? God told Abraham that in multiplication, I will multiply you. He, he, he's not thinking of addition. So I see somebody here being multiplied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? You see, what you believe is what you have. But again, but before you say what you believe, abund from the abundance of the heart, what happens? The mouth. So be talking multiplication from now. What do you talk about? Don't talk of lack. Be talking of what? Multiplication. So we have had the capacity. You see, when he gave those, the testimonies of those, those passages, I, I don't know if you took note. I took note. I wrote them down. Now, you see, when an apostle is teaching, Sometimes we make mistakes. Go back home and study. Am I clear? And pray on each of the matters. Not because it's here. That is what we have been trained to do. We are students. I am a student till tomorrow. The moment you stop being a student, you will never grow any longer. You, you plateau and you end up. So, I want to say thank God for you. Multipliers, if you are here, can I hear you say, I will multiply. I multiply. Did Jesus Christ multiply bread? Yes, Talk to me. Did he multiply bread? That's, that's, that's my senior brother. We're of the same father. I know you don't like what I said. Look at me. I say we're of the same father. Jesus Christ is my senior brother. No, don't. It's not for you. It's for me. It's, uh, uh, baba con la je, baba con, baba con. Is that true? Is, are you, do you understand what I'm talking about? You see, if you understand Jesus Christ as being your brother, some things will change in your life. It's my senior brother. And in those days, when we were small children, come, my brother. When we go and look for trouble, we we'll go and run and stay behind our senior brother. Say, so, they crazy, oh, lay. Oh, oh, she. The, the person cannot come. It's going to use. <laughs> He's waiting until my senior brother leaves me. Am I correct? I don't know anybody who did what I did. I don't, some of you, I was very bad, though, before I repented. I will say, oh, 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 Olodo, Allah call you Oloshi. The girl has shared one here. See, she, and she won't say anything. She will wait. She's waiting. But my senior brother said, I am with you all way. Anywhere I go is going with me. So, he's, and he's in charge. He's the creator of the universe. So the universe is under my feet. The world is at my feet, oh. Ah, leave that one. We're talking about capacity. You are looking at me as if the world is under your feet. Look, Psalm 8, last one. I said Psalm 8, Abby. Psalm 8, God said that all things that he created, they are in your hand. Is that so? Okay, I'm saying, brother, please go and sit down. Thank you, sir. So, shout hallelujah. So, we are going to stand up because uh, I'm supposed to go. Apostle is taking me to Lagos to go and join the plane to Port Harcourt today. So, we are going to pray. Do you, please stand up. Uh, please accept our Baba that is here. You can see them, sir. You can see it, sir. Come again, sir.
But Bam was asking me that if God does not fill his cup, what will he feel? I said, thank. He said, eh -eh. hallelujah. hallelujah. Give me a better hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, so we are going to pray. Our first prayer is to thank God for the rima of the Holy Spirit that God has given you. Just thank him. In whatever language, speak Yoruba, speak Aosa, speak Igbo, whatever dialect you want to speak. But lift up your voice, pray. And tell yourself, God, I thank you because I am no more the same. I am no more the same. I have the capacity. I have the capacity. God, you're not going to fill my tank. Ah, this, oh, hold on, hold on. I think uh, maybe, maybe I, was, I will sing one song here now that I change. I change the song completely. Maybe you, you people, you love that song. There shall be showers of blessing. Uh -huh. I don't ban that song. So the whole thing that is falling from God is shower you're looking for. How can you be looking so you don't shower long? You don't mean shower. It's what you say you will have. So I turn it around, there shall be torrents of blessing. Can I say torrents of blessing? I wanted to talk about it before, but the way you are doing now shows that you are for showers and I reject showers in your life. I, I say pray in Awusa, Yoruba, pray, just pray. Then you started praying like showers, so I, that's why I stopped. Do you understand? Look, listen, listen. Showers of blessing is in the book of Ezekiel, but I'm not myself and Ezekiel, we're not in the same class. Hello, I'm not, you are not in the same class with Ezekiel. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh, praise the Lord. But the truth is that if rain is falling, is this shower you should be asking for? In the rain that falls in the bottom here, is it showers? Eh? All the rain that God has, those of us who did geography, when you see Kulumo, I mean, Kumulolimbos in the sky, they said the rain is going to pour. Am I clear? And why should I be asking for showers? So, in this dispensation, there shall be torrents of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Am I talking to somebody? Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, you must see, you see, hello, hello. If we're going to change our, if, listen, hello, hello. If we're going to go to, if we're going to have capacity, you must allow the Holy Ghost to change your vocabulary. Change all, you see, there are some songs that you must not sing again. You ban them because at that time, that was what they understood. Capacity one year, one year. Am I clear? That was their capacity. That was what they understood. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are songs that are not good at all. When you sing them, God will be looking at you and say, what's wrong with this person? You are more than this. And you limit yourself. And you cage yourself. And you, by all means, imprison yourself with your words and your songs. And your thoughts. Am I still talking to somebody? So, by the grace of God, God will fill our tank, our modern tank. And then there shall be what? Torrents of blessed torrents. So, when you come out like this, that when, when you are beaten by rain, torrents come, it's like flood. Torrents means flood. And so I believe that you are going to pray. Your capacity has changed. Tell somebody my capacity has changed. You may not know it now, <laughs> but I know it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray now. Lift up your voice and begin to bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. If you want to sing, sing. If you want to cry, cry. But begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. Begin to praise him. 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 We are talking about capacity. We are talking about capacity. We are talking about capacity. God is my father. I am a child of God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Listen, listen. When the children of Israel went to Egypt, something happened. Let me tell you what happened. The Pharaoh that knew them loved them so much, but when the Pharaoh that knew them died, they now got them and then persecuted them. Do you know that in that persecution, they were multiplying? In this country, you were multiplied. Excuse me, sir. I'm not a Nigerian. I'm not a Nigerian. Mo, can you Nigerian? Cherry, mo, she won't be here. I'm an ambassador. Mo, she shall learn me. The mother, she shall learn me. I'm not a son. 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 I'
Nigerians are the people that are troubling you. I'm not a Nigerian. Since I'm not a Nigerian, enjoy telling me, Shekbo. Jesus Christ kept on telling you, you are not of this world. You are not of this world. You don't believe it. He was trying to change the capacity and the thinking. He said, you are not of this world. And he kept on telling the people that I am not of this world. And so the elements of this world could not attack him and take over his life. They couldn't. Nothing, nothing of this world could handle him. Am I still talking to somebody? You didn't like what I said. Hey, Joe, am I no? Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. So, all right, please. Let us thank God for just one minute. I will pray. Let us thank God for just one minute. I will pray for you. It's a general prayer I'm going to pray. And I know that already God has multiplied somebody here. I know that someone is being delivered and set free. And you will get back home and your home will never be the same. No matter what has been happening in your family before, God is going to multiply what you have. Can I hear you say, I receive it? Say it again, I receive it. Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. All right, let me just lay a hand on you by faith. Apostle, can I lay a hand on them by faith? All right, just give me your right hand. Your right palm, just stretch it forward. Father, I lay my palm on their palms. You said I will lay a hand on the sick. The sicknesses are in different dimensions. Some are sick physically, some are sick emotionally. Some are sick because they, they, have, they are going through some pains. And Lord, I thank you because you are healing somebody. As I lay my hand, Lord, let, let that hand be anointed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. All right, lay it on yourself. You lay it on yourself anywhere you like. I'm going to pray for just about 30, 30 seconds and we'll be true. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are the God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for you. I command that from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet, wherever they lay their hands upon, I command that if there is a physical sickness, headache, migraine headache, heaviness in the head, disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out in the name of Jesus. And God told me to tell his sister. He said, I saw your tears last week. You were weeping. And you were crying because something, you were so pained. And he said, I should tell you that he has wiped away your tears. He has wiped away your tears. I want you to shout hallelujah. God said, I put your hand there. I pray, Father, I pray for them from the crown of the head to the sole of their feet. I pray for all those who are sick physically. You said I will lay on the sick, they will recover. And you gave me a sure word of prophecy. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18, he said, I and the children whom you have given unto me were for signs and wonders. And therefore, by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the authority of your word, I lay my hands on them. Therefore, receive sign, receive wonder in your body now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever my father has not planted in your body, I root it out right now. As I lay my hand upon you, let the power of the Holy Ghost is passing through your being. And you are being touched in your eyes. You are being touched in your ears. You are being touched in your chest. You are being touched in your stomach. Everything that is called ulcer disappears in the name of Jesus. Everything that has to do with pain in the chest disappears in the name of Jesus. Everything that has to do with pain in the ankle disappears in the name of Jesus. And I command that everything that causes you to cry and to lament and to weep and to think that Life is not worth living. I command faith to live come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Did I hear someone say, I have life? Put your hand on it. Say, I have life. I have abundant life. Say it again. I have abundant life. Say, I have life. And I have abundant life. I have life. I have abundant life. That is mine. Say it again. That is mine. In the name of Jesus Father, as you have declared, so it is. You have not given these ones the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Lord, they have life, and you say we shall have the life more abundantly. That is their portion. And as their hands are there, I pray for those who have issues with their finances. Let their finances, let there be a turn around this week. Let there be a turn around this week. Lord, let people remember them. Those that are holding you, they will pay you. And those who forgot you before, they will remember you this week. And from now on, things are going to go from good to better, from better to best, from best to excellence, from excellence to super excellence. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to have super excellence in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for doing it. And as you know that God has done it, 
receive it in the name that's above every name in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus your health will not fail again your strength will not fail again that weakness in you disappears and your spiritual life is coming back I release prayer power upon your life prayer power into your spirits prayer power into your soul prayer power in your walking in the name of Jesus can someone say I receive now let me tell you something before I go please don't make prayer to become conventional what did I say yes prayer is if Jesus when I asked him he said men ought always to pray and not to faint I said can I can I, I said but I will sleep he said yes if you wake up from sleep what next that's the Holy Ghost talking to me so do you know that if I walk from here to here I pray as I'm going, I'm treading upon serpents and scorpions. So if you are treading, are you hearing what I'm saying? That is how you, 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 you make prayer as you're washing clothes. You say, Lord, Father, thank you for washing my spirit, washing my soul, washing me clean. You are washing clothes. Am I still talking to somebody? If you have opportunity to go to the toilet, and you're going to the toilet, as you're going to the toilet, some things are coming out. Say, Lord, everything that is bad in my body, go my daddy, go my daddy. Everything that is contrary, any as you are washing, you are baiting, you are baiting. Am I talking to somebody when the Holy Ghost taught me this prophetic way of praying? I said, So, prayer is not some, it's true, the conventional is there, but this one that is not orthodox is there as you are walking. As you, that is why I know some people will not understand me. I have driven for since 1980, I've been driving, I never had an accident once. And the Holy Ghost told me how to pray when I'm on the steering, what I should say. And it was all I said, God. Now, as I'm driving, I'm, as I'm driving, I'm, I'm praying. Can you imagine? It looks funny. So, I thank God your prayer life has changed. Tell somebody my prayer life has changed. Say it very well. Say it again. And I know it has changed. Father, as they have confessed, so it is. You'll be greater than what you have ever been before. You'll be, you'll be the greatest in your family. Uh, the apostle mentioned it, Father, we receive Joseph's anointing. Can I hear someone say, I received Joseph's anointing? Do you know that Joseph, God blessed him to have dominion in Egypt? But it was not only Egypt. Other nations came to Joseph. Other nations will come to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Those who do down on you, they will be looking up to you very soon. That is what happened to Joseph. And that is what is going to happen to us from today. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And then one thing I saw about Jesus Christ and Joseph, I never heard that Jesus was sick and was very sickly because he was in charge. He was governing. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Are you following what I'm saying? Even when Azama died, the government was on his shoulder. When he was on the cross, the government was on his shoulder. He died, he went and came back. The government was still on his shoulder. There was no time the government was taken away from him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so you must understand that we are ruling and reigning. What did I say? I'm in charge. Who is in charge? No, Satan is in charge. Satan is in charge. Demons are in charge. Who is in charge? Not God and you. Who is in charge? Who is in charge? I'm going to close. Who is in charge? You know, it's dangerous to give me microphone. Who is in charge?